Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. I'm Miss Lisa. This is my YouTube channel. I'd like you to like, share, and subscribe because I want a thousand viewers so that I don't have to record and upload, but I can do YouTube live goals. This is biology class and we are going through this book. It is Glinko Biology and Everyday Experience. This class is designed primarily for homeschoolers, but if you like the way I, I explain things, come on in and um and enjoy it. Today we're going to talk about blood. Ooh, creepy. Getting getting close to Halloween here. Let's see when this video is going to be shown. Uh, I think it's after Halloween when this is going to be shown. We just had Halloween. Creepy. All right. So blood. You have blood. You know, everybody knows what it is. It's in your body. You get cut. It comes out. You might faint at the sight of it, but it's very important. Now, this is one of the things your book talks about right at the beginning is it says you have about five liters of blood in you. So imagine a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola. Imagine two and a half of those. That's how much blood you have. Hollywood does not understand this. You will see people die on TV or in the movies and they have blood, blood, blood. So much. Way, way more than two and a half bottles of Coke. Um, that, you know, anyway, all the, all the blood uh, on TV. Um, at least it's all fake. They're not killing real people. And we know it's fake because they put way too much. All right. Anyway, you want your blood to stay in your body. You don't want to die from blood loss. Now, why? What's the function of blood? Well, you will find this in your book on page 244. Okay, and it says that you, your, your blood really has two functions. It, it has pickup and delivery, the main ones. We're going to talk about some more things with your immune system and stuff. But the main ones are pickup and delivery. So what gets, what gets um, delivered with your blood? Um, nutrients will go fats, proteins, and ca ca carbohydrates go to your body cells. It del your blood delivers oxygen to all your body cells. Um, and it de de delivers chemical messengers, enzymes, to your body cells, and water, minerals, and vitamins. So that's what it is delivering to. And then it takes away. It takes away waste. It takes away carbon dioxide. Um, and it also takes away extra heat. It can move to your skin and release the extra heat in your body. So if you're flushed and because you're hot, it is your um, extra heat leaving your body. Um, now, other functions of your blood is to fight disease, to stop bleeding. Um, not all animals have blood. We are, we talked about this last chapter when we were talking about the circulatory system. Sponges and a lot of aquatic creatures use water to be their blood. The water will bring the nutrients in, the water will bring the oxygen in, and the water will take away the waste. So they don't have circulatory systems like sponges. They just use water as their circulatory system. Um, so that's the first thing. Not all animals have blood. Um, all right. That's so they live in water. Now, on page 246, it is a lab, and we did this lab last year when I taught this class in biology, and it's because I have microscopes and slides. So if you have microscopes and slides, I want you to do this. I want you to draw these cells in your sketchbook with your colored pencils, draw them big, make them look good. But I want you to look at blood under the microscope. Um, and what we did was exactly what the lab asked for. We looked at frog blood and human blood. I had those slides and we looked at them. If you don't have those slides, they're on the internet. They're on the Google. Um, go look at the images and you can do it off of that. But you should be drawing these in your sketchbook and answering the questions and doing the lab. So make sure you do that lab. Now, what are the parts of the human blood? Um, first of all, there's the liquidy part that doesn't have cells, and it's called plasma. This is not the same as the state of matter. You know how there's solid, liquid, gas, and plasma, where plasma is found in fluorescent lights and in stars and things like that. It's sort of a gaseous thing. That is not it. Plasma is a liquid. It is a liquid for its state of matter, and it's straw-colored is how it's always described. I used to work in a hospital, 
in the lab and one of my jobs was to take the test tubes of blood, I'd put them in a centrifuge, which is this spinny machine, and it'd spin them around and around and around, and all the cells, all the red cells and the white cells, all the cells in the blood would go down to the bottom, and what would be left in the test tube is this yellow liquid. That is the plasma. So, um, plasma is non-living, it's not alive, it's yellow, and it is 92% water. The rest of it is blood proteins, nutrients, salts, and waste chemicals. Um, most of the pickup and delivery jobs of blood are carried out by the plasma. So things get dissolved like Kool-Aid in water, things get dissolved into the plasma, and that's how it carries stuff around. Okay, the next thing is the red blood cells, and you can see pictures of them in your book on page 247. They look kind of like donuts, but instead of having a hole, it just gets thin in the middle. Red blood cells are made in your bone marrow. You know what bone marrow is. You've seen a bone and the, the, the spongy stuff on the inside. They're made in there, and then as they move out of the bone into your bloodstream, the, they have nuclei, they pop out and then they're left with a dent in the middle. They're, they're thinner in the middle, thicker on the edges, okay? And they carry your oxygen. So they do the, the delivery of the oxygen. They do it in a molecule called hemoglobin. And um, what the and, and part of this that is important for this delivery of oxygen is iron. Iron is an important part of this. So some people are anemic. They don't have enough iron and they feel tired. And I had that when I was pregnant and I was being a public school teacher the first time and I was pregnant twice while I was there. And I remember being anemic and, and like all my kids were in my room, all my students were doing a lab and I had this lab desk that had a place where your feet go underneath it, but then it's solid. And I remember thinking, they don't care what I'm doing, those students, and I could crawl under the desk and go to sleep and none of them would even know. I was so tired all the time. And I had to take iron. I took slow effy and it helped. Like it was like being able to breathe when I would get that iron because I was anemic. And then just like last month, I was going to go give blood and they pricked my finger and I didn't have enough iron. I got rejected, but they gave me a t-shirt anyway. I got a Wonder Woman t-shirt because I tried. So they let me they let me have the t-shirt, but I couldn't give. Uh, my family likes to give blood regularly because blood is, we're going to talk about it, that it's living, it is alive, and it can save people's lives. So, um, and it saved my nieces. They were micro preemies born really, really early, twin girl nieces. And when they were little, they had to have their blood taken out and have someone else's blood put in. And um, because they were so little, they got blood of someone they knew. The doctors didn't want to just use the blood bank, but they wanted them to have blood of someone they knew. And they got, um, one of the twins got my mom's blood and the other one got her, uh, her mom's dad's blood, which was um, their grandfather, because they had the, the type O negative blood. And it saved their lives. And it, and it, and it, prevented them from having complications um, from being micro preemies. They had to have transfusions. So, um, you know, giving blood, you can save someone's life. My family all have the blood app from Red Cross where you can give and then, cause we all give like every 57 days when we can. And they all do it every 57 days. A lot of times I don't do it as often cause I get rejected. But, um, but then they'll tell you your blood, you can, one donation can save up to three lives. And so they'll be like, your blood got sent wherever, or, you know, kind of things like that. And so it's kind of neat to think that there are people who's our blood help save. Um, they don't like my blood, the, um, the Red Cross, as much as others. They like blood, when women have babies, the more times they're pregnant, they can build up things in their blood that, that are less desirable. So like I always know my blood's going on the back shelf. It'll only be gotten off out if they really need it. But um, like my boys, you know, that, and one of my boys has rare blood. He's got um, O negative. And so um, he is the universal donor, and we're going to talk about that a little bit in the book. But it means that his blood can be given to anybody, so it's called trauma blood. 
And um, so if someone is coming into the emergency room and they are about to die and they don't have time to type their blood to see what kind they get, they give them O negative. So his blood always gets used. He always gets the little emails and they always try to pay him to, to give. They'll, they'll offer him, if you come give, we'll give you a $20 Amazon gift card. If you come give and like, they don't offer that to me, but they offer it to him. They don't offer it to his brothers, but they offer it to him because he's got the O negative blood. Um, and the, they, they call all the time. Is he going to come give? Is he going to come give? Is this getting close? And so I have the name, the phone number on my phone because I'll start calling because he gave him my numbers to his. Yeah. And I've got them labeled vampires because they want his blood. And it'll be like, oh, the vampires are calling. Time for you to get blood again, Eli. They're, they're wanting your blood again. But it's because his blood is so crucial. It's the one that really saves people's lives. It's perfect. He's a guy. He's never been pregnant, obviously. And he's got that really good O negative blood. But all blood types are needed. So it's not like just his. But so it's a good thing to do. It's pretty easy. And, um, and you can, you know, save somebody's life. Now, there are some religions that don't allow you to. So, you know, depending on your religion, um, but some religions don't allow um, giving blood or receiving blood products. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about, we talked about the red blood cells that they have hemoglobin. There's also a thing, and these are their main, your bone marrow. There's also white blood cells. They look kind of like, they're bigger. They look kind of like, um... <laughs> Uh, I think all of them is bigger. When I looked at the word to the hospital and look at them under the microscope, it was one of my jobs. Um, uh, but they kind of look like an amoeba and they can leave. Here they go. They can leave your veins. They can leave and go out into your cells because they fight infection. That's their job. They, um, they destroy harmful microbes. They remove dead cells. They make proteins that help prevent disease. So they're very important part of your immune system. Um, there are less of them in a drop of blood than the red blood cells. Um, uh, they live less time than the red blood cell. So these cells are in the blood are alive. So blood is alive. It is a living part organ of your body. Isn't that weird to think about? That when your blood is on the, the, the pavement because you fell off your bike and skinned your knee, um, that that's life. B blood, the life is in the blood. Give life, give blood. So, um, the, that's interesting. And of course, the white blood cells are also alive. There is also some, oh, and white blood cells are made in the bone marrow, but they're also made in the spleen, the thymus glands, and the tonsils. I still have my tonsils. I wish I had had them taken out because I get sore throats all the time. They talked about it when I was like in elementary school and I'd had strep throat. 14 times in one year. It sounds like a made up number, but it's the truth. And the doctor said, if she gets it one more time, we're going to take her tonsils out. And I didn't. And I so wish that they had taken my tonsils out because that was not the end of my throat problems. Um, but anyway, they, uh, I got some tonsils, so they're making some white blood cells. Um, let's see. Uh, they fight infection. They destroy bacteria. They attack it. Now, when you have an infection, your white blood cells will count, will go up. And then, it'll, so one way that doctors could tell if you have an infection is looking at your white blood cell count. But there is a cancer called leukemia that ha that is, will also send your white blood cell count up. But the difference is, is that leukemia sends it way higher and it doesn't go back down again. With the infection, it goes up, but it goes back down again. So you can read about the difference. And my b brother actually had leukemia. He had Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a kind of leukemia. He had chemo and radiation and he got over it. So he hasn't had it anymore, but it was very serious, very bad. And um, leukemia is just terrible. But the Leukemia Society um, raises money to fight all kinds of blood cancers. So that's a, a, a good charity where um, they're fighting a bad kind of cancer. I knew a lady who had Hodgkin's lymphoma and she died from it. She was a lady, a really sweet lady I used to work with when I was in college. Um, I had a job working at a jewelry store and she worked there also. And she had had, had it and beat it, but then it came back. 
um, and she passed away from it. So leukemia is, is awful. I hate cancer. Um, another part of your um, blood is called platelets, and they're cells that break apart and, that are alive. They're part of the living part of the blood. They're also made in the bone marrow. They break apart w when you have a cut or, or, or when you're bleeding, and they cause the clot to stop the bleeding. Now, there are some people who have a hereditary disease called hemophilia where they don't have this, and they can a little cut can make them bleed to, de to death, and the royal family of Russia had it. So they, and it's, it is a sex-linked trait, meaning that the boys in the family had it, but the girls didn't. And they had all these girls, and then they finally had a boy, and he had it. And then they tried to get this witch kind of guy to um, cure him, and he got great uh, power over the family trying to cure this boy of this genetic disease. And it's really interesting to read and sad, too, because then the Russian Revolution happened, and the royal family was killed. So, um, very, very, uh, the communist revolution in Russia um, back when they were a communist country. Now, um, they're not anymore. So, anyway, interesting. And a lot of the royal families of Europe had this because they were all related to each other. The whole Disney thing where, you know, the, the prince has to marry a princess. It was really like that. And so they all were married to each other, the royal families, and they had this genetic problem. And, um, and you, they, you could go and look it up and see the family trees and who had the, the hemophilia and, and how it was passed through these royal families. So maybe sometimes it's all right to marry a commoner. You know, the new one, uh, Princess Kate, she's a commoner and the, they need some new blood in, the, in that family. So that's a good thing. Uh, branching out, having some, com some commoners in there. Um, but anyway, you can study more about it. The second lab is where you are looking at, where you're counting blood cells and looking at. We did not do that lab la last year, but you can do it. Um, you would need to like go online, print out some pictures of some blood cells and count the, um, the, the cells, mark them as you count them. It wouldn't be hard to do. We just didn't have time to do everything. And we did the human blood versus the frog blood, and we did that one, but we did not do the second one. So, but if you want to, do it. Go for it. It doesn't have any weird equipment, nothing too much you need. Um, you could use a microscope or you could use a picture out, off of the internet. Okay, so then on page 254, they talk about blood types. The blood types are A, B, A, B, and O, and then they can be positive or negative depending on the RH factor. Um, they can't all be mixed. There are certain ones that can be mixed and others that cannot, and it's because of these traits they have on the outside of the blood. And if you give the wrong blood to the wrong person, it could even result in death. So they have to type them. Well, we're homeschoolers. We're a homeschool family. And, um, and I had bought at the science, the homeschool convention, we called it Homeschool Con, that we have here in Atlanta at Galleria Mall every year. I had bought in the little science display, I had bought a bunch of stuff for the year. And one of the things I bought was a blood typing kit. But, you know, I didn't want to have to stab the kids with the little stabber thing. I thought, I'll just wait till somebody gets hurt, and then we'll type their blood. Well, one of my sons was playing in the backyard, and he went sliding under the, the fence. We have a chain-link fence across my backyard. We have a wood fence round part, but it was chain-link in part to keep the kids out of the creek. Remember I told you about the creek in another video? Well, he goes sliding under the chain-link fence, and part of it stabs him in the leg. It goes deep in his leg. I jerk the fence out of his leg. I scoop him up to take him in the house to um to uh to clean it off and see how bad it is and see if we have to go to the hospital and get stitches or not. And as I'm carrying him up, uh, Eli, Nathan's like, "Hey, there's some blood. We can dye this blood." And I'm like, "Eli." I know it hurts. I know you're turning blue from the pain, but you have really thick blood coming out of your leg. Do you mind if we type it? <laughs> and he said, 
go ahead. So I'm carrying him into the house and Nathan, my oldest, is running down to the homeschool room and getting the, uh, opening up the, the, the science closet and pulling out the blood type kit and he's running in and we type Eli's blood and we find out that he's O. We're looking at him all and we decide he didn't need stitches. <laughs> the story would be worse if he did, but, but we typed, he still has a scar from it though. Uh, but we typed his blood and it was oh. <laughs> but um, when I was in high school back in the dark ages of the 80s, um, we did it in school. We would um, prick our fingers and we would type our blood as a lab in biology. They do not do that anymore. Now that now because of AIDS, which is in your book in this chapter, um, schools do not mess with blood anymore. There is no blood typing lab done in public high school anymore that I know of. Maybe in AP biology or something like that, but I think nobody does it anymore. But in our homeschool, we did. So, uh, but we waited till somebody got hurt and it was Eli. <laughs> Poor thing. All right. Um, so you can't make some, that's in your book. Now, um, another part of this is your immune system and your immune system is not just the blood. It, there's different parts of your immune system, different organs that have part of this. Your tonsils located in the back of your throat, if you still have them, um, it makes and stores white blood cells. Your thymus gland, which is in your chest, the upper part of your chest produces white blood cells in infants. Once you're an infant, it doesn't do that anymore. Your lymph nodes are throughout your body. If you ever felt knots in your neck, uh, after having a sore throat, after having strep or something, that's your lymph nodes. There also can be um, bumps underneath your arms and all around. You have a whole system, a lymph system, just like your circulatory system. And it, these lymph nodes are part of your um, defense system. Uh, they're located throughout your body and they store white blood cells. You can feel them on your head sometimes. You feel these little lumps in your head if you've been sick. And Eli, once again, my son, um, he had eczema really bad and he was scratching himself to the point where it got infected. Well, he ended up with in, in, infected lymph nodes because if you have scratches, it can infect your lymph nodes. And that's what cat scratch fever is. If you've ever heard that whole old song, cat scratch fever, because you really, you can get scratched by a, a cat and get infection in your lymph nodes. Well, Eli did it to himself. No cat required. So it was Eli scratch fever. Um, but sometimes you, and his was here on his neck, but they're all over. You have these little lymph nodes and they can become infected. I used to remember, I told you all that I got strep throat 14 times in one year. I had terrible knotty neck from that. Terrible, terrible, um, swollen lymph nodes because of that. So those are in your body. Another part is your spleen. It's located in your stomach. Um, and it rids your body of old red blood cells. It stores red blood cells and it makes white blood cells. So very important part. The lymph vessels and fluid, just like you have your circulatory system that blood goes through, you have a whole system of lymph vessels, a whole other system that you probably never knew about, that they're all connected. They carry white blood cells throughout your body. It's your lymph system. It's part of your connective tissue. And then the bone marrow is where the blood cells are made. Um, I used to work at a hospital. I told you all that. And I had, there was a guy who had had cancer and we had to do a bone marrow, which means that they took this giant needle that was big and hollow like that big hollow in the middle and they jammed it into his hip bone. They sucked out the marrow and my job of the operation was to hold the Petri dish that the doctor went and squirted it all into it. I capped it and took it to the lab and it was to see if he still had cancer or not. And, and it's very painful. You can't um, really give people anything for it to, to make the pain go away. So um, I, I was feeling so sorry for the guy that he was going to have to go through this terrible thing. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry you're going to have to go through this. And he said, I'm not. This is going to show I don't have cancer anymore. And I was like, oh. And so then they did it and he was real brave and they squirted it and I took it in and he didn't have cancer anymore. I had to go look to see if he was right. And he was right. He didn't have cancer anymore. So yay. Um, but I assisted and the whole time I was like, oh, please God, do not let me drop this because I had to close it and then take it to the lab and it would have been terrible if I had dropped it because then they'd have to do it again. So I was very careful with his bone marrow that I assisted in that operation. Um, but I didn't like that job. My favorite part of that job was eating breakfast at the hospital cafeteria. And that should not be your favorite part of any job. 
Um, okay, so another part of your thing is your immune system is your 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 body will make antibodies, which are um, chemicals that help destroy bacteria and viruses. So the bacteria or virus is called an antigen. It's a foreign par particle attacking your body, and then you have antibodies your body makes to fight against it. So that's how shots work, is they will d give you shots, uh, immunization shots, to try to get your body to make antibodies against diseases so that then if your body is comes in contact with your disease, it's ready to fight it. So that's like the polio shot and things like that. Um, it makes you have antibodies to those diseases. Now, they are controversial. You can go read about it, talk to your mom about it. But there are people, some people who think that the stuff added to it is harmful. And um, other people are like, no, you're crazy. It's all good. So um, when we talked about this last year in my biology class, I had students on both sides and they were about to get into it. And I'm like, no, we are not going to argue about this. We'll let, your, we'll let the grownups decide this. We're not going to argue about this in our little ninth, 10th grade biology class in our homeschool group. So, um, so the last thing your book talks about is... Uh, AIDS. AIDS is a blood disease. You can get it through um, blood transfusions. You can get it as a sexually transmitted disease, so you can get it through sex. Um, it is one that uh, a mother can pass to her unborn baby also. So, um, and it is one that destroys your immune system, and there is no cure for it. But, but now they have this AIDS cocktail of pills that is really extending people's life. So they've done great work with science um, combating AIDS, but it's a terrible, terrible disease. And it was really bad when it first came out because um, there were people who got blood transfusions just like, but, and that they got AIDS in the hospital from the blood transfusions, not from sharing needles, being a drug addict and things like that. But now blood is really tested and um, there's not that danger of getting AIDS from blood the way it was back in the 80s when it was first coming out. But, it, um, but it's still bad. But not as bad as it was because now there are drugs to at least help. So anyway, come back next time and we will talk about respiration and excretion. You know what excretion is? Uh, like, share, subscribe. I'm Miss Lisa. Science is great.